trust.
we're grateful and we pray the Lord for all things in his name. We're thankful again for the blessings of the Lord and for the Lord having blessed us to be able to again come and to share with you uh, by the grace of God. Uh, and uh, to share with you concerning the word of God on this uh, Thursday evening. Praise the Lord. So with that, um, we are grateful for the blessings of the Lord. And uh, we're thankful for that song concerning faith. So with that, I want to encourage you at this time to bow your heads with me. And uh, as we go before the throne of grace in prayer, but just before we do that, I want to say thank you to all of you that are have joined in. Uh, this, the, the, the screen is a good distance away from me. So with that being the case, I can't see the names as clearly. Um, and uh, I don't want to make mistakes with trying to call names. So I'm just going to say a shout out to everyone. And thank you for joining in in the name of the Lord. Now, uh, if you can hear me good, just Give me a thumbs up. Somebody shoot a thumbs up to let me know the volume is okay and that you can see me clearly. Do I need to bring this in closer? Or as far as the, um, uh, okay, I'm getting hearts. So that, that means uh, um, you can hear me clearly. Okay. Uh, and, and you can see me clearly. See me clearly. Praise the Lord. Okay. Somebody give me some waves if you can see me clearly. Praise the Lord. All right. We're grateful. We thank the Lord for all that we're seeing. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Let's go before the throne of grace now. Turn on God our Father. Again, we say thank you. Again, we bless you. Again, we glorify you, Lord, for blessing us to see this day. This day of October the 1st, 2020. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy for your love toward us. We thank you for how you blessed us in our going out and our coming in. We thank you for how you kept us from danger seen and unseen. We thank you for how you've kept back the hand of the enemy. And with Lord, we thank you for all of those things. And most of all, we thank you for how you came and gave your life that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And we can't thank you enough. We glorify you for this time of allowing us to be able to go into your word. And in the name of Jesus, we ask the Lord that everyone, you will open up their hearts to be receptive, uh, the spirit man to be receptive to your word, that they may apply it to their lives, that you might get the glory out of their life. We say thank you now again for blessing us to be able to share in this time. Continue to keep us, continue to lead us and guide us Quicken our understanding to your word in the name of Jesus. We'll be so careful to continue to give you all of the praise and all of the glory. It is in the mighty name of Jesus our Christ. We ask it all that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen and amen. Again, we are thankful and we pray the Lord for all things in his name. And uh, we trust that uh, everyone is doing well. Um. Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 through 10 is where we want to go this evening by the grace of God, and we shall strive not to hold you uh, too long. But Hebrews chapter 11, uh, beginning at verse 8, you'll find these words, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after received for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him 
of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And I want to talk to us tonight. Our, our lesson subject will be, or the topic of our lesson will be to deal with dealing with faith, but I, I, I want to uh, deal with the marks, the marks, M-A-R-K-S, the marks of genuine faith. The marks of genuine faith. Our text mentions a man named Abraham. Praise the Lord. He is known as the father of the faithful. Praise the Lord. This man is revered by over one half of the world's population, according to studies. In our day, Abraham is held in high esteem by various uh, religious groups other than Christianity. In ancient times, the Jews considered Abraham to be almost worthy of their worship. In the Bible, Abraham is presented to us as a great example of a man who lived his life by faith, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 19. And according to James, James chapter 2 and verse 23 records the fact that Abraham was called the friend of God. Mm. This man's life was a special life and a great portion of the first book of the Bible is devoted to it. <clears throat> if you have been watching, Abraham, when he left his home to follow God at the age of 75, you would have said, there goes a man of God. But if you had seen him lying to Pharaoh and later sinning with the Egyptian handmaiden Hagar, you would have said, that fellow Abraham is a phony. But which observation would be the truth? In our world, many people claim to possess genuine faith. Lord, help us. When you speak to them, they say, I'm saved. <clears throat> they say, I'm right with God. But are they really? That's for all of us. Many people claim to know God but do they have the proof in their life that they really know God? Does the evidence in their lives say they are genuinely saved? <clears throat> Pray the Lord. That's a that's a that's a hard question. Mm. That's a hard question. Praise his name. That's a hard question. And, and, and I'll venture to say it's a hard question to answer. But I believe that we can find some help by spending a few minutes looking into the life of Abraham. And if you will take the time to observe his life, you will see that he had, that he had the marks, or he has the marks of genuine faith all over his life. And guess what? The same marks uh, that were in his life will also be in ours, praise the Lord, if we truly have genuine faith. So let's take a look at these marks of genuine faith that are revealed in these verses. As we do, we will see where we are with the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, the first thing that I want to point out, according to verse 8, is, and the A part of verse 8 says to us, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance. <clears throat> the first thing we want to look at here as a sign, as a mark, is the mark of faith's experience. The mark of faith's experience. F-A-I-T-H apostrophe S. 
in case you're not understanding my English. <laughs> Praise the Lord. First off, we've got to understand that it involves a call, an irresistible call. Abraham was, was a lost pagan living in a place called Ur of the Chaldees, according to Genesis 11.28. He was raised in a society of people that worshipped a moon god. He was headed to hell. But we are told that God called him to go with God. We are told that God called him, look at that now, to, to go with God. Mm. Somehow, God spoke to Abram's heart and told him to leave the land he was living in and go to a new place. God moved on his heart and called him. This is how faith comes to every person that has it. No one wakes up one morning thinking, you know, I think I'll get right with God today. The lost sinner cannot think that way. Why? <clears throat> because according to Ephesians chapter 2, uh, he's dead in trespasses and sins. Praise the Lord. And if, uh, let, let, let's just go there right quickly so that uh, you won't say, well, he's just calling off. Off scriptures, but he he's not taking us there. Let this is Bible study. Well, let's go there right quickly. Ephesians chapter two, praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter two, verse one through three. He says in Ephesians chapter two, verses one through three. He said, "And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein verse two, wherein in times past." Ye walked according to the course of this world, praise the Lord, mm. according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You see, praise the Lord. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, mm -hmm and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as us. All of us walk that way. I hope you hear me tonight. All of us walk according to the flesh. Yes, praise the Lord. And if we don't watch it, praise the Lord, even though we know him as our Savior and all, if we don't watch it, we can walk, we can find ourselves giving in to things according to the flesh. Praise the Lord. Well, my brothers and sisters, I want you to understand very clearly. He, he, look, look. He was. He says he's dead in trespasses and sin, and he's blinded by the God of this world, according to Second Corinthians chapter four. And I'm going to go there right quickly. Second Corinthians chapter four. Praise his name. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four says this, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Listen, if you don't check it for yourself, if you don't look at it for yourself, if you don't really see it for yourself, look, <clears throat> Satan will cause you to think and to believe in a manner that is contrary to truth. Praise his name. Uh, he will blind. He, look, if you don't watch it, he'll blind you. He'll cause you to be blind. Yeah, because of him being the God of the world, he'll cause you to be blind spiritually. Even naturally, right now, there are some of us that will go against the grain. There are some of us, praise the Lord, that will go against the grain. There are some of us, praise the Lord, that will, will, will listen to stuff that is totally not true. And we'll go with it. Praise the Lord. So he wants us to understand that faith comes to every person. This is how faith comes to every person that has it. 
As I said to us, no one wakes up in the morning thinking, you know, I think I'll just go on and get right with God. The lost sinner can't think that way. And the question was, why? Well, I'm telling you, dead in trespasses and sin, according to Ephesians 2, 1 and 3, blinded by the God of this world, according to 2 Corinthians 4, and has no desire from God, according to Romans chapter 3. Let's go there right quickly, because I, I, again, I want to point these scriptures out, and I want, I want it to be clear I'm not being judgmental. I'm pointing out what all of us need to pay close attention to, including myself, praise the Lord. If I don't watch it, praise the Lord, then I'll miss the mark, praise the Lord. We all fall short somewhere, sometime. And I'm not trying to give us a cloak to go do anything. I'm just being honest with us that while we're yet in this flesh, we're subject to making mistakes. But where we realize that we are wrong, we have a right to say, Lord, forgive me and mean it from our heart. Well, according to Romans chapter 3, verse 10 and 12, it said, 10 through 12, excuse me, it said, as it is written, comma, there is none righteous, <laughs> comma, no, not one. Even those that are being judgmental of those that are trying their best, that are living for the Lord, that are trying their best to go according to the faith walk and, and, and to walk in the Lord and, and to be a believer in Christ Jesus and all of that. There are those that sitting on the sideline, praise the Lord, that fault finding. They're saying they ain't got nothing. They're saying this and that and the other about you. But the Bible just told us right here, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. You ain't righteous if you ain't got Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, verse 11 says, there is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. Huh. They are all gone out of their way, out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. In other words, <clears throat> he's pointing out to us in what is called the university of guilt is we are all guilty. Hallelujah. We're all guilty. So he wants us to understand that is dead in trespasses and sin, according to Ephesians 2, 1 and 2, 3. I'm going to go over that again. Blinded by the God of this world, according to 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. And had no desire for God, according to Romans 3, 10 through 12. And had no ability to get to God. The sinner, the person that does not know the Lord, is dead. One day, however, God begins to move in the lost sinner's heart. God quickens the dead spirit and causes that sinner to become aware of his or her sins. According to Romans chapter 3, let, let, let's go there again. Romans chapter 3, right quickly. I, I want to make sure I point these scriptures out. Chapter 3 and verse number 23 of uh, chapter 3, you'll find these words, for all have sinned. I, 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 I hold it there. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Praise the Lord. So, the, look, look, God moves on the heart of the lost sinner. God quickens the dead spirit and calls the sinner to become aware of his sin. And the fact that all have sinned and fallen short, according to Romans 3.23, he makes the sinner aware of the wrath of God and of the coming judgment uh, on sin. Well, John chapter 3, Lord help us. John chapter 3, we're going to go there right quickly. Praise the Lord. John chapter 3. And uh, that round there, round. let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. John chapter 3, yes, 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 yes. Now, 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 I want, I want you to remember this. Praise the Lord. And, and hear me good. Glory to God. Because where we are about to read is, is actually the words of 
our Savior, Jesus. John chapter 3, verse 18. That's St. John chapter 3, verse 18. It says these words. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Huh. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Praise his name. So, and then verse 36 of that same uh, chapter says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. I hope you hear me. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. I hope you hear me. And then Romans, let's go back to Romans chapter 6. Praise the Lord. Right quickly, and some of you may say, oh, well, I know about that scripture. I know about that. Where are we going there anyway? Romans chapter 6, praise his name. Romans chapter 6, and verse number 23 says this. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Praise his name. Well, the Lord, God, showed the sinner that he's headed to hell and that he had only one hope of salvation. God takes that sinner and points him to Jesus, to the Lamb of God who died on the cross and rose from the dead. And God says, you might be lost, but if you will come to me through faith in my son, I will save you from your sins, deliver you from the wrath, from my wrath, deliver you from my wrath, and give you eternal life. This is called conviction. And without it, no one will ever be saved. Let's go to John chapter 6 right quickly. John chapter 6, St. John chapter 6 again, praise his holy name. Let's look there, if you will, mm. at John chapter 6, and let's look there at verse number 44 and verse 45. Verse 44 says this, no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. Nobody can come except God draw him. Praise the Lord. Verse 45 says, It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that have heard and have learned of the Father coming unto me. Praise the Lord. So, it's called conviction. Without God convicting you, without the conviction, without the Lord making you aware of your sin situation, you can't come. You just ain't going to wake up and say, I'm going to it. It comes by conviction. Well, have you ever experienced the divine call that brings the conviction of sins? This is the essential first step in acquiring genuine faith in God. And all of us that say that we've been saved can say, say that we're saved can say that I was convicted. Whether it was through a song that you heard, whether it was through a sermon that you heard preached, whether it was someone that came by your way and witnessed to you, and as they witnessed to you, you became convicted through the power of the Holy Ghost, through God working upon your heart, through the power of his spirit, the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord, then you became convicted. Well, the next thing I want to point out is it involves an individual choice. We are told that when Abraham heard the call of the Lord, he obeyed. He did what God told him to do. This faith in God is what brought salvation to Abraham. According to Genesis 15 and 6 and Romans 4 and 3. 
And I'm going to go there right quickly and, 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 and read this according to Genesis chapter 15, praise the Lord. And verse number six, you will find these words. And he believed in the Lord. Huh. This is what he's talking about, Abraham. And he believed in the Lord. Yeah. And he counted it to him for righteousness. Praise the Lord. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. Huh. He believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. He believed in the Lord. Yeah. And counted it to him for righteousness. That, that's Abraham. In Genesis chapter 15. Yeah. And verse number six. Yeah. Abraham. And I, 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 I'm going to share this with you from, from, from uh, another version. He said, Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteous, as righteousness. <laughs> He, he, he put it on his tab. Praise the Lord. He, he put it on his credit. <laughs> he credited it to him. He gave him that credit. He gave him, in other words, he, because he believed God, God considered and placed Abraham in the basket as being righteous because he believed God. Okay? Now, Romans chapter 4 <clears throat> Praise the Lord points this out to us. Glory to God. Romans chapter 4. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Romans chapter 4. Y'all excuse me. Throat trying to get dry. For what saith the scripture? Huh? For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God. <clears throat> and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Excuse me. So we are told that Abraham heard the call of the Lord and he obeyed. He did what God told him to do. <clears throat> this faith, this faith in God is what brought salvation to Abraham, that salvation, when he was talking about, he, it counted him as right for righteousness. That meant salvation. That meant that meant being set apart. That meant be, being belonging to the Lord became a part of Abraham's walk, talk, life that he lived. This is the second step in acquiring genuine faith in God, my brothers and sisters. First you are called, and then you come. When you come, Jesus promises to receive you and to keep you. John chapter 6, St. John chapter 6, let's go there right quick again. Praise the Lord. St. John chapter 6, let's go there right quick. Hallelujah. St. John chapter 6, here we are. In verse number 37, and you'll find these words here. And it says this to us in verse number 37 of the 6th chapter. And these are the words of Jesus. He said, and all that the Father hath given me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Hmm. Do you hear that? Praise the Lord. He said he ain't going to cast you out. Praise the Lord. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him, may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. That's God's will. <laughs> yeah, Jesus came, prayed the Lord, the Son of God and by way of the flesh, came, prayed the Lord, in order that you might receive the will of God, 
What's in the will is yours if you will accept it. It's yours if you will believe it. What's in his will. Praise his holy name. So, first of all, God called, then you come. When you come, Jesus promises to receive you and keep you. It's not enough to know that you are a lost sinner. It's not enough to be convicted. But you must come to God by faith, repenting of your sin and trusting Jesus for your salvation. But don't fear when he calls. He also gives you the faith to believe and be saved according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of man, and you can't boast about it no kind of way. You can't boast and say, I got it on my own. You got it because God convicted you, God called you, and you came. And he gave it to you. Praise his holy name. Can you recall the moment? <clears throat> Question for you. Can you recall the moment in your life when you turned from your sin to embrace Jesus? Placing your faith in him is an essential component of salvation. It's not enough to join the church, become a better person, turn over a new leaf, get baptized, or try to stop sinning. The Bible says ye must be according to John chapter 3. Ye must be born again. Hallelujah. <clears throat> when this takes place in your life, the moment, the, the, that moment is the instant when genuine faith is born in your heart. The moment when you respond to God's call in humble obedience is the first and most important mark of genuine faith. He prayed the Lord. Look, that's the that that's that that's the that's the first and most important mark of genuine faith. How does that strike you? Praise the Lord. Do you have a mark? Praise his holy name. You gotta know it for yourself. I heard I I I I, I think I saw something, I read something, I heard something where somebody was saying what, what uh, about the church and, and things, the church just falling for anything or something like that. I think I read or I saw, prayed the Lord or I heard it one and all of this. But let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, the scripture tells us that the Lord said, upon this rock I build my church and the very gates of hell, the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Praise the Lord. When you come into Christ, when you accept him as your savior, my brothers and sisters, I want you to clearly understand, hallelujah, you got to hold fast to what you believe, regardless of what happens in this life. That's what that song was telling us by uh, Pastor Charles Jenkins. It was telling us that in first it's talking, what do you do? Praise the Lord. Well, when life starts coming at you with a flood, when the enemy in this life starts, that thank you, Holy Ghost, when the enemy, <clears throat> like a flood comes, starts coming against you as you live for the Lord, you got to hold fast to your faith in Jesus, your walk, your integrity in Christ Jesus. Man going to try you on every hand. Man going to say all kind of stuff about you. But you got to know for yourself. Because at the end of the day, you ain't got to stand before no judgment seat of man. You got to stand before the Lord. You got to give an account. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes. We, go, we, we, we that are saved, we still got to stand before him. We going to have to give an account of what we did. We are going to have to give an account, praise the Lord, of how we served. We're going to have to give an account of how we live. Yeah, praise the Lord. We're going to have to do that. We're going to have to stand on that. Praise the Lord. We say, we're we saved now, so we are delivered from the wrath. Hallelujah. When you're saved, you're delivered from the wrath of God. But as a believer in Christ, we still got to give an account of our works. Praise the Lord. We still got to stand before him concerning our works. By the way, 
my brothers and sisters, let me hurry on. By the way, did you notice that Abraham was not called to pray a prayer, sign a card, or join something? He was called to go with God. That is the gospel call. Jesus reached out to fallen men and women and said, come, follow me. 17 times in the gospel, Jesus called people to follow him. He called his disciples this way. According to Matthew 4 and 19. Let me go there right quickly because I want you to get this. Matthew 4 and 19. Praise his name. Praise the name of the Lord. Boy, this, this, is, this is good. This is good. Praise his holy name. 4 and 19. He said, And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of the riches of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm in the wrong one. I'm, I'm thinking I'm in Matthew and I'm in Mark. I'm sorry, y'all. Mark, Matthew, chapter 4. Praise his holy name. I'm trying to play tricks on me. Matthew, chapter 4. I knew that didn't sound right. Praise the Lord. Matthew, chapter 4. Uh, praise the Lord. And let's look there, if you will, at verse number 19. Yeah. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He called his disciples this way. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He called Matthew this way, according to chapter 9 of Matthew. Yes, let's go there. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 9. And Jesus, as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, follow me, and he arose and followed him. That's Matthew, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, he called many seekers this way. Let's go to Matthew chapter 8. Let's go back one chapter. Let's go to chapter 8 and look at verse 22 of chapter 8. And we have, but Jesus said unto him, follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. And then, according to, uh, look, look, he called each of us to follow him according to Matthew 16. Let's go over to Matthew 16. I'm just trying to show you how he called. Matthew 16, praise the Lord. And look there, if you will, in verse number 24. Yeah, verse 24, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Hallelujah. If all of them want to run and do what they want to do, you keep following Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus said this, according to John 10, 27. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Salvation come down to you hearing his call and you going after him. To follow Jesus means that you will love what he loves, hate what he hates, Go where he goes. Do what he does. Do you have a mark? Praise the Lord. The mark of genuine faith. Marks of genuine faith. Praise his holy name. Well, my brothers and sisters, I'm going to let you know right now. Don't put your eyes on man. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Please do that. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep the faith. Trust the Lord. Don't let anything turn you from the Lord. When the curveballs of life, the tricks of the enemy, the fiery darts of the enemy come against you. When Satan comes against you like a flood, 
when he's trying to overtake and trying to cause you to run into doubt and fears, hold fast to your faith. Keep the faith. Life is going to come at us with some hardships, but if we keep our faith in Jesus, he promised he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us. We keep our faith in Jesus. And I, 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 I'm, I'm closing here and we're going to pick up, we're going to pick up on, on the second part of this by the grace of God. But I, I, I want you to hear me good. When you know where you stand with the Lord, don't let nobody, hear me good, don't let nobody cause you to doubt where you stand with him. Allow me to go this way. Job. Conversation went on between God and Satan. Job ain't know nothing about it. God offered Job up. Because when Satan say, I come to and fro seeking whom I can devour, whom I can destroy, whom I can turn away, whom I can get not to follow you. The Lord says to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? <laughs> well, Lord, you blessed him with all this stuff. Why wouldn't he serve you? Hmm. My brothers and sisters, hear me very well. Hear me good. All that went down in the life of Job, there come some so-called friends. And them friends, them friends, hear me good, them friends, and I said so-called, praise the Lord, because friends, true friends, hallelujah. My mama used to tell me, uh, I, let, me, let me say it this way. My mama used to tell me, say, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. Praise the Lord. And here is this man going through all that he's going through. But out of all of that, the Bible said that Job did not charge God foolishly. Foolishly. He didn't go against him foolishly. And all I'm trying to tell you, my brothers and sisters, is when you know where you stand with the Lord, don't let nothing in this life cause you to start charging at God foolishly. Going to him with crazy thoughts. You're going to have, in this life, you're going to have some trials. You're going to have some tribulation. You're going to have some problems. We're not problem free, but we got somebody with us, on board with us, that's not going to leave us and won't allow us to lose out. He said, all that I've been given, I'm going to hold them. I, 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 I'm not going to lose a one. <clears throat> Not by my will, not by his will. No. If you if you if you wind up lost, it's your own choice. You walk away. Keep the faith. You gotta know where you stand. Regardless of what anybody else says. You gotta know where you stand. I hope you hear me. I hope you hear me real good. I just want to encourage you. I ain't fussing, I ain't arguing. I just want to encourage you. Know you got the marks. Know where you stand. And keep it. Keep the faith. I I I I I just want to share that that song with you, a little portion of that song with you again. I want you to hear this very clearly. I want you to hear this very clearly. I want you to hear it. Praise the Lord. I want you to hear it. Hear, hear what he's saying. He's saying, keep it, keep it. Hallelujah, keep it.
Hear it now. Hear it. Hold on. Keep the faith. the faith. you know. I just told you earlier from the word of God and showed it to you. When he said all that's in his hand, he won't lose them. Huh? You in his hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There are things that are designed for you to go through. Praise the Lord. That the Lord have designed. He got a plan. He got, he, he, it's all in his hand. He got it all worked out. But it's to help you grow. It's to help you stand. It's to help you become more rooted and grounded in the Lord. And you hold fast and know that you got the genuine marks from what we've dealt with so far. Know you got those marks. We're going to come back again next week by the grace of God. Uh, uh, the Lord said the same. I pray the Lord. We're in the month of October. And uh, we're going to uh, pray the Lord. Um, look at um, our hour of power for the month of October on each Thursday evening. We are going to uh, have uh, what is uh, more like a, uh, a service, a uh, short service within an hour's time or less. And uh, we're going to deal with uh, uh, the hour of power in the way of, uh, I know at this time we are in the midst of this pandemic and we are not necessarily having churches coming in and going to churches, but we are we are still holding fast to our faith and our belief. And uh, the Lord has blessed that uh, St. Matthew is now within the month uh, that we celebrate the church anniversary of St. Matthew Missionary Baptist Church. And uh, I believe we are in the neighborhood of 110 years. And uh, I'm grateful that the Lord has blessed me uh, with 28. Uh, of those years uh, with them, and uh, I'm 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 very grateful for that. And so, with that being the case, uh, next Thursday, um, uh, I, I, it would yeah next Thursday by the grace of God we are looking to have uh, an hour power service, and uh, by the grace of God um, we're going to see how the Lord will bless us as far as a preacher. Uh, if, if we don't have a preacher, um, I'm waiting to hear, but if we don't have a preacher for that particular night, then we're going we're gonna to do it ourselves, and then by the grace of God, the next Thursday night, we will have, I, I, I do believe we have a lineup already on the next Thursday night. I'm just waiting to hear for this present Thursday coming. So I'm just asking that you would join in with us we're going to do it virtually by the grace of God. Um, um, live stream, Facebook, we're going to do it that way. Um, and, uh, uh, and celebrate and hear the word of God 
and uh, worship the Lord within that hour or less in our hour of power. So please uh, join us on next Thursday evening in the name of the Lord. And um, uh, we'll have the announcement on the page by the grace of God. And uh, we'll have the lineup as to what will be on next Thursday in, in Jesus' name. So hold on to that and, and, and join us in the name of the Lord. Let's continue to pray for those that are not well in the body. Let's continue to pray for those that are going through times of bereavement. Praise his name. Let's keep the uh, Wright and Bailey family in our prayers. Let's keep the Moore family in our prayers. Let's continue to keep the Udell and Johnson family in our prayers. Uh, let's continue to keep um, the Brown family in our prayers. Uh, and uh, let's continue to keep the uh, Lord have mercy, the name leave me right at this point in time. But you, you know, any family that you know that's going through time of bereavement, let's keep them in our prayer in the name of the Lord for those who I failed to call right at this time. I had my list, but uh, Russian, I did not um, grab it. So we're grateful. We thank the Lord for you joining in with us. Let's continue to love one another. Let's continue to pray for one another. Let's continue to lift one another up. And remember, keep the faith. When you are at the song said, when your back is against the wall, when you come to that fork in the road, when you come there and don't know what to do, keep the faith. Just hold on. Keep the faith. And don't give in. Know you got the genuine marks of faith. And when you know where you stand with the Lord, don't let nobody shake you with where you stand with him. Remember, we're going to make this journey in Jesus' name. God bless you. We love you. Let's bow. Eternal God, again we come and again we say thank you. We thank you again for having blessed us to, to, to share from your word. We ask the Lord that you would bless it. We would receive and that we are hired that which has been given to us in, within our hearts that you'll get the glory out of our lives. Look upon the families that are still going through bereavement and those families that are presently going through bereavement, uh, such as the Moore family. Uh, pray, God, we ask that you would bless them, the Wright and Bailey family. We ask that you would bless them and all the other families, Johnson family, the Udale families, uh, the family of Donald Johnson, we ask, Lord, that you touch them. Uh, Father, we ask that you just look in on all of those that are not well in the body. We don't have to ask, necessarily ask you to look in, but we just ask that you would touch. That's what we mean, Lord. Touch them and bless them with a good night of rest in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. That man, woman, boy, girl that doesn't know you're in the pardon of their sin, don't let them rest content till they come crying, I yield, I yield. I can't hold out any longer. Lord, help us that we will stand firm and hold fast to our faith, that you might get the glory out of our lives. And we say thank you in Jesus' name. We ask it all that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne, to the only wise God our Savior, to him be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. God keep you. We love you. Join us Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. Oh, yeah. By the way, I need members, some of my young members. I need y'all to come on and commit to be a part of our media, <clears throat> social media team, our uh, media team with our sound, the whole nine yards because we're, we're looking for the Lord to do bigger and better things with us in the name of the Lord. But we need some of y'all to come on and be a part so you can be trained uh, as to what to do and uh, uh, so we can keep this moving because we don't want this to fall no kind of way in Jesus' name. God bless you. God keep you in my prayer. We love you in Jesus' name. See you Sunday.